Okay, here you go. Higher derivatives. Today is an awesome, awesome, awesome thought into higher derivatives. The fact is, is that so far we've just taken the first derivative. What about the second derivative, third derivative? Or once we get to the fourth derivative, we stop writing these little uh, apostrophes. Is that what we would call? Uh, we, we just write like four and five and so on and so forth. I think that that's what we have here. We have one, two, three, four, five. So actually, actually we could get rid of that one. So there's, there's five functions up here. One is the original, and then one's the first derivative, one's the second derivative, one's the third, and one's the fourth. You got to decide which is which. You can look at the graphs here. Maybe maybe you want to label them because I know that you don't have the colors, do you? So you know maybe you want to label them uh, A, B, C, D, and yellow would be E. Uh, it's up to you. But I want you to take a couple minutes, uh, try on your own, or talk to the person next to you, and try to see if you can determine which is which, and maybe. I think the best way to start is just try to figure out, man, which one really would be the original. And it's tough. So you go ahead and uh, try it. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Okay, folks, uh, I heard a lot of good discussion. And what I want you to consider is this, okay? Um, and, and you've talked about this before, but as you look at these graphs, the important thing to consider is this. Number one. Okay, just, you, sometimes you could just pick one and, and, and see what you could say about it. But let's look at D, for example. What do you notice about the derivative of D? It's always, it's always positive, right? So therefore, its derivative must be either A or B. Correct? What do you notice about the derivative of A and B? It's always negative. So the derivative of A or B has to be E. Exactly. So you've established that E is a derivative. You've established that A or B is probably a derivative. The part that I want you to focus on that, that was able to give me some insight was this. I looked at this function right here, and the reason why I looked at this function first was because I noticed that this function, it, had a, it was decreasing, it was increasing, and it had a derivative of zero. Is there something on this graph that models Negative, zero, positive. Yeah, D definitely models that, right? And and just notice this, okay? That this one crosses zero, doesn't it? So does this one, right? Is there any function that has a derivative of zero at one? There's nothing up here that has a derivative of zero at one. Is there something up here that has a derivative of zero at one half the blue function notice right here the derivative of the blue function is zero right but if you look at this spot right here is there any function that has a derivative of zero at one no but at one half yes so this determines for us very clearly by just looking at where it's zero where it's positive where it's increasing where it's decreasing that C is the original. Once we're there, it's not too bad to be able to start to progress. We now look for F prime. Well, F prime is going to uh, have to cross the X axis because we said that C had a derivative of zero right here. So therefore the derivative of C is going to be D. Now I need to do the derivative of D. Let's see. The derivative of D is always, so it either needs to be A or it needs to be B. Interesting. Okay, which one do you think it is? It is A. Let's talk about why here for a second. I think that uh, one of the best ways you could try to analyze this is just by picking a point say right here look at the graph of d if i draw a tangent line at that spot what would you say is the slope about one and look which graph has a value of one at one does the green graph have a value of one or does the purple graph have a value of one the green graph has a value of one doesn't it whereas the purple graph is much higher 
The purple graph is talking about a graph that has a steeper slope. So therefore, we would say A. Now let's go to F triple prime. What can you say about the derivative of A? It's always negative. So therefore, it must be E because it sits below the x-axis. And finally, the fourth derivative so the derivative of e, we've only got one left, but we notice that the derivative of e is always positive, and you can see that b is always above the x-axis. We're going to say b. Anybody get them all right? Good job. Way to go. Give yourself a pat on the back. Very good. Find the first and second derivatives of the following functions. Is there application for the second derivative? Yes, it is super important. Let's do this. F prime of x, first derivative. What's the first derivative? 4x cubed minus plus 2. Hey, good job. Love that power rule, right? Let's find the second derivative. Oh my gosh, Mr. Gens, you're going to honestly have me find a second derivative? What's the second derivative? Doesn't get much easier than that. Notice in calculus, we're trying to look at multiple pieces. We did the graphical piece, right? Got to be able to do the graphical. And now we're examining the analytic, the algebra part. Okay. So f prime of x. How do I find this derivative? The chain rule. How did you know that, Katie? Yeah, it's a composition function, right? And we say the derivative of the inside is 2 times the outside 10 times 2x minus 3 to the it's okay we understand why you said 9 you did 10 minus 1 is 9 it's just a 5 i make the same mistake all the time it's okay who drew the boxes okay watch just watch you can do it. Stop. Don't say can't. <laughs> Nobody asks you to talk, Riley. <laughs> Nobody. What's the derivative of the inside? Times the outside would be 20, and then you're going to dump the 4 in front to get 80. See how nice and quick that chain rule could be? If you want to do the boxes, do the boxes. I'm just trying to help you out. You're welcome. Oh, no, the square root of 2x minus 3? What rule do I use for that one? Chain rule. I'm super confused already, so I'm going to use the boxes. U to the 1 half. 2x minus 3. Dos. Just Spanish for 2. And 1 over 2 roots of u. So f prime of x is, if I take 2 times that 1 over 2 roots of u, what do I get? I just get 1 over. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, was it? But now what rule do I have to use? The quotient rule, don't I? Or instead of using the quotient rule, I could just use the chain rule, right? It's just 2x minus 3 to what power? Yeah. Don't make life difficult, folks. Make it easy. So I've got 2x minus 3 again. I've got u to the negative 1 half. What's the derivative of u to the negative 1 half? Negative 1 half, u to the negative 3 halves. So negative 1 over 2u to the 3 halves. What's the derivative of 2x minus 3? Multiply them. The 1 half goes away. The negative's still there, right? Yeah, so f double prime of x is negative 1 over 2x minus 3 to the 3 halves. 
his gig upside down. Because that's what's in the movie. Stand and deliver. Wait a minute. Hold on here. Raise your hand if you have seen the movie Stand and Deliver where the students take the AP Calculus test. They're in, they're in L.A.? Okay. So raise your hand. Okay, Grant's raising his hand. So me and Grant are raising our hands right now. Jake? Thank you, Jake. Carter? No. Yeah, Jaime Escalante. Yeah. Well, you're, now you're kind of making stuff up, but <laughs> no, it's a it's a true story. Okay, well, no, pineapple does not belong on pizza, but a Canadian bacon does. But I will say this, folks, we might have to have a movie night. So, some night instead of uh, you guys doing whatever else you do at night, we're gonna like come here. And we're going to watch Stand and Deliver together. We're going to have popcorn. We're going to have a calculus party. You want to do it? Oh, really? <laughs> All right. I like it. Thank you. All right. Are you ready for the tough one? Looks harmless, doesn't it? Theta cosec out of theta. No big deal. What rule do I use? Product rule. What's the derivative of theta? One. I'm supposed to know what? We good? Okay, all right. So we've got one times the cosecant of theta. That was easy, right? And then... Uh, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So I'm going to have a negative theta times cosecant of theta cotangent of theta. Yeah, I, again, again, I, I have to say Katie makes an Katie makes an excellent point. I truly believe, folks, that um, if you look at that, if you look at that for five minutes, you should be able to come up with a nice way to remember it. They they do go together. It, it's it's apparently not easy for everybody, Grant. I I but I. Okay, my my point is this: is I have taught this class for nine years, and I find that many students are able to find nice ways of remembering that. There there's many connections that sit in there. I shared one, okay? <clears throat> if you look here, okay, all the cos are negative. Derivative of cosine, negative. Derivative of cosecant, negative. Derivative of cotangent, negative. You see that? <laughs> okay, so you pair sine with cosine, right? Cosine with sine. When I think of secant, I think of cosecant. And when I think of tangent, I think of cotangent. So look at your derivatives. Tangent is secant squared. If you flip it to tangent, cotangent, you get cosecant squared. <laughs> uh, sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x. Okay, so <laughs> the derivative of secant, okay, was secant tangent, okay? Well, let's go to the tangent one. Derivative of tangent we said was secant squared, correct? Derivative of tangent was secant squared. So you notice that secant and cosecant, those are the reciprocals of sine and cosine. Okay? And, and if, if 
So if you don't remember the, the, that the reciprocal sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, that yeah, you definitely are going to struggle to remember any of this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Now I got to take the second derivative. Actually, I can give myself even a little bit more space here. Product rule. So now I'm going to take the derivative of that, right? So we're going to need to use the product rule twice, right? Okay. So how about this? I will call this F right here, and I'll call this G. Okay. What's the derivative of F? One. So that was nice, right? Times g, cosecant of theta, cotangent of theta. What comes next? Plus, I'll write f, which is theta, times the derivative of Cosecant cotangent, right? So now I need the derivative of this guy. What rule do I have to use to take the derivative of that? The product rule. Yeah. Um. I don't think it's going to work out like that, no. I don't think so. Okay, so just to review, what was the derivative of cosecant? Here's my minus sign. Then I decided that this is the product of two functions, theta and cosecant cotangent. What was the derivative of theta? 1 times, yep. Plus, because we're in the product rule, right? So it's f prime g plus g prime f. This is f. Now I need g prime, so we need the derivative of this. So I'm doing g prime. What, what do you have to do to find g prime? Product rule. Okay, what's the derivative of cosecant? Negative cosecant of theta times cotangent of theta times g. What is g? times cotangent of theta plus what's the derivative of cotangent? Negative cosecant squared of theta times cosecant of theta. Okay, this is uh, kind of messy. I'm going to work from the inside out, okay? Um, so I'm just going to write this negative cosecant of theta, cotangent of theta, uh, minus parentheses, cosecant of theta, cotangent of theta. Right here. I just haven't gotten to that part. So plus... 
or actually I'm going to distribute the theta so it could be plus or minus. So we have minus theta cosecant of theta cotangent of theta squared. Very good. Because we have cotangent times cotangent is cotangent squared. Um, it's multiplied together, so it's still multiplied together, right? I distribute the theta across addition. So it's currently with this guy right here. Okay, It's with this set, this term, and now it's going to go over here. So cosecant squared times cosecant would be... Oh, yeah, thank you, the theta. There we go. All right, we're almost there. If you look here, aren't these two terms the same? So if I take a negative one and subtract another one, I have negative two cosecant of theta, cotangent of theta. And then as I distribute my subtraction sign, that's a plus. Theta, cosecant of theta, cotangent of squared of theta, plus theta, cosecant squared of, or uh, cubed of theta. Yep. Yeah. You know, um, so we're not going to do this, but you could factor out what? You could factor out a cosecant. And if you do notice, um, you know, if you would take just this set here and factor out a theta, uh, you could come up with a cotangent squared or cosecant squared, but there's really nothing that really connects together that much. But sometimes you get second derivatives that end up incredibly, incredibly messy. And I would say that, that this is pretty disgusting, right? Question. Um, I would say that, you know, if I did put one like this on the test, I'd probably need to give you 10, 15 minutes, right? Uh, so you probably wouldn't even have that much more on the test, um, considering all the other things we'd have to do. So um, I would say that, that it would be unlikely, but never know. I mean, look at your teacher, right? So. Yep. Okay, last example for the day. 9x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. We're going to find dy over dx, which is y prime. Then after that, we are going to find dy squared over d squared y, which is y double prime. So this is notation. Uh, you know, I think that, Jake, you just had a question on this, right? You asked me the other day. So um, sometimes in college classes or on AP exam, they will also refer to that as y double prime. Okay? Simply just means the second derivative. Everybody see that this is first derivative? Everybody see that one second? Good. Let's find the first derivative, y prime. What do I do in order to find the derivative of that? Hint, we did it yesterday. Starts with an I. Implicit differentiation. Very good. I know. He expects me to remember what we did yesterday. It's like this guy. Just get rid of him. What's the derivative of 9x squared? 18x. Plus, what's the derivative of y squared? 2yy prime equals 0. So, Zach was gone yesterday. Zach, we're happy to have you back. Here's what we learned in very short detail. When you use implicit differentiation, that's when it's not solved for a variable like y equals or x equals. Just take the derivative the same way. But when you take the derivative of something with a y, attach a y prime every time. Got it? I would still watch the video. All right. We subtract the 18x. 2y, y prime.
Yeah, we're 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 gonna struggle on college folks if these are the issues we're coming up with. I'm just, I am too. I, I am just saying this is not a big deal. Um, negative eighteen over two is negative nine, x over y. Everybody okay with that one? Hey, that was nice, huh? Notice sometimes derivatives come out ugly and sometimes they come out nice. But we haven't taken the second derivative yet, have we? Oh, my gosh. Can you think of how bad this is going to turn out? Maybe it will be really, really nice. Who knows? Better do it. What rule do you have to use here? The quotient rule. <laughs> oh. Derivative of negative 9x. Negative 9. We all okay so far? Times the bottom. Minus the top. What's the top? Negative 9x, so positive 9x. Times the derivative of the bottom. Do it, sir. Y prime. Divided by. Y squared. Okay. This doesn't look too bad, but what did you come up with that we haven't seen before? Yeah, we got a we got a Y prime sitting in our derivative. We can't accept that Y prime. That's not we don't allow a derivative to sit within a derivative, do we, Rowan? No, why would you do that? Fortunately, we know what Y prime is. What is Y prime? You're right. We're going to have to find common denominators, and that's where the world ends. It will be over, man. Negative 9y plus 9x times negative 9x over y. All over y squared. Thank you, Dylan. So you see that the uh, that those will remain in the numerator. In the denominator, I have a, a 1 here, so what do I need to multiply to find common denominators? Multiply by a y, so I get a y squared over that y, right? So I get y double prime is negative 9y squared minus 81x squared. Whoop, thank you. I'm dyslexic. Minus 81x squared over y to the third. Katie, where did you get y to the third? Okay, so I'll write it out. This is over y, and then that's all over y squared. So when you multiply by the reciprocal of y squared, which is 1 over y squared, you see that we're going to come up with a y cubed in the denominator. Grace? Do you see the negative 9y squared? Do you see the negative 81x squared? Okay, do you see the y on the bottom? So then we will multiply by the reciprocal. We get y double prime is negative 9y squared minus 81x squared over y cubed. And at first glance, you're going to say to yourself, well, let's leave it just like that. But every once in a while, you got to try to just be a little bit resourceful and say, well, Suppose we did take out a common factor out of the top, a negative 9. And if you did, what would you be left with? Yeah, we would be left with a 9x squared. Whoop. Come on, smart board. Stop being stupid. 
Go go gadget, smart board. Are you okay with that? Factoring out the negative nine, are you okay with me writing that? I just, I just, I flipped them because I thought that somebody might notice something, and Chris did. <laughs> Pause. This is the same as that, right? So this is the same thing as four. Watch substitution. Nine x squared minus or plus y squared. That is equal to what? Four. So I'm going to put a four in that place, and what do I get? Negative thirty-six over y cubed. Sometimes second derivatives come out really, really icky. Sometimes second derivatives come out really, really pretty. Nope, I would take a, a point off. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, the third is super easy. Negative 36, y to the negative third. Take that derivative, and you get 108 over y to the fourth. Now the derivatives after that point are extremely simple. Sure. I don't, I don't know what bigger means in this situation. I don't You said it's increasing in power. Fine. Well, we're going from four to we're going from negative four to negative five to negative six to negative seven to negative eight. And this is jumping back and forth between positive and negative, positive and negative. So no, I don't know what bigger means in that situation. All right, way to go, folks.